Welcome back. I'm still Randy Bueller, still here with Mike Flores, hanging out of the booth. Good morning. A little more pregame. The players are sitting down at their tables, shuffling up their decks. Ooh, deck lists. We've just been handed the deck list to see what decks uh, we add and the DPA are going to be playing. First match we're going to be watching is the match between Andrew Pacifico and Nicholas. Spawn row. B versus B, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, what do we got the keys here? 17 land versus 17 land. Red, white against. Yeah, Pacifico's red, white. playing red, white for the DPA. And, uh. Bonarell's playing red, Be black. Becker's, Becker's prediction is that Pacifico takes Nicholas apart in this match, I recall. That was the prediction. What's Pacifico got going on? He's got the red, white samurai deck. In theory, a couple cage of hands, Nagao, not There a is a Sozin Can Bruiser on this side of the table, though. That really? Guy is, he's awesome. There's not that many Samurais in the Samurai deck. I'm going to have to take back my claim. Samurai deck is basically a Houndmaster and a Nagao. Hey, well, if you only want two Samurai on your team, hard to pick two better ones. Oh, and a Cliff Rider. I flipped, the, flipped over to the Betrayer side. So it's Red White Beats, but it's, it's more spirit based than Samurai based. Yeah, I guess you only really need Nagao to be a samurai deck. You know, those samurais clog up all your spirit craft anyway. Who wants them? Still like Pacifico? Haven't seen the deck list? I'm still looking. I, I think I like Pacifico. Pacifico has got a card called Cage of Hands, of which he has two copies. It's a good one. And that card fights against a card called Sozin Can Bruiser, yeah. which might otherwise hit him seven times in the face. Fair. Um, Pacifico's got... Hanabi Blast. At neutral ground, we say, remember that time you drew Hanabi Blast and lost? <laughs> Neither do well, I. Well, also has Hanabi Blast. They're even. It's one, okay. one Blast apiece. Hanabi Blast. The thing Pacifico awesome. doesn't have, though, is the pants from back in the late 90s. As I said before, in 1998, I could have fit into just one of the, the legs of Andrew Pacifico's pants. Becker thinks that we were talking about the creature pants. Back in 1998, a common strategy called Red White Jank, similar to what, what Pacifico got to say, was to, to draft terrible creatures and then put different sort of pants on them. Uh, Sunclasp was earlier than 98. That's like 96. Yeah, that was like 97. That was like Visions, correct? But in 98, the cards were like H Heroes Resolve, was that one? There was like cards that were like plus one, plus five. Plus one, plus three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dave Price got confused and played some of those cards in his Pro Tour deck. He's like first turn cohort, second turn uh, <laughs> giant strength. Mm -hmm. Seem to work okay. Third turn stone rain you. <laughs> so for those of you out there on the internet, I do have my laptop in here. I am watching the message boards. I'm I'm curious what you guys think won the draft. You've heard you've heard my picks, you've heard Mike's picks, you've heard John Becker's picks. We think uh, we think we add has got the edge here, and I think we're leaning towards the sort of French Canadian hookup in the other matchup, although a little more. Yeah, I think it's, I think that we add is likely to win this one. I think that no matter who wins the Nova on one spin match, it's not going to be a blowout. It looks close to me. Right. Yeah, one uh, one thing going on here at the live site that that's pretty interesting is that the crowd has been sequestered from the players this time around. So hopefully we'll get the crowd a little into it. We'll get the crowd cheering along for a change. It should be fun. It should be a fun day. Now I look at Nicholas's deck. He's got a lot of really good removal cards. Double rent spirit. Yamabushi's flame in addition to his Anabi blast and. Pacifico doesn't have Blessed Breath, so... No, oh, yeah. I mean, this looks like, uh, it's... It could very well go... go in the favor of Nicholas. All right, so... We've got the deck list. We still think Andrew Pacifico's got the edge, but we'll be back momentarily. Players have sat down at their tables. They've got their deck shuffled up. We've got our cameras ready, and, uh, we'll be right back with live coverage of the semifinal matches.
Hello and welcome to the Pro Tour Atlanta semifinals. I'm Randy Bueller. I'm here with Mike Flores, and we are getting ready for the match between Andrew Pacifico and Nicolas Bornarell. Pacifico is part of the Cinderella story. We had last chance qualifier team, first last chance qualifier players of any kind to get through the Sunday. Is the clock going to strike midnight, or are they going to go through to the finals? We think that uh, the glass slipper is still on. I think that uh, that Wead has has the advantage in in this draft. But now I'm looking over Nicholas's deck. He's got an awesome curve. Triple Goblin Cohort in the early game, alongside double Nizumi Cutthroat. I think that he can come out very quickly against Andrew Pacifico. Pacifico, in his red-white, initially we called it a samurai deck, is not gaming with Battle Mad Ronin. Murray the Mauler would not approve, I don't think. <laughs> Left in the board? It's, it, it's not underplayed total. I think that Battle Mad Ronin is actually a very good card against a deck that's got triple Goblin Cohort. And I, it's yeah. good against... It's good against... Um, Nizumi Ronin as well. It's free yeah, damage, right? and it's... I mean, he's got great cards, so... I'm just trying to see if there's something I would rather play at them. I mean, this Nagao Bound by Honor card isn't bad. No, oh, yeah, it's, it's not that good, good, is it? Oh, it is? It's not bad. I can't see the monitor. Oh, let's see here. The Voted Retainer swinging into Goblin Cohort. He just trade there, right? I don't know. Why do you not trade there? Because that does two damage. If he's got if he's got a a, a Nizumi a Nizumi Cutthroat, which I bet you he has, he's probably gonna want to crack. Interesting. Although now is that an Ember Fisty Bear? That makes yes. that crack a lot worse. Yes. I I bet you. Oh no, just another cohort. Wow. Double cohort for a Nicholas. That's Bonner. a very good attack, though. I bet he had. Yeah, that's fine. I bet he had the the Cutthroat and then just didn't play it. Which is Amber Good. Well, bad news for we add on one of the back tables. Don Smith has Mulligan to five. Uh, he has a bunch of two for one, so we come back from that. Come back from. Also, his deck has got uh, the, all the crazy manner increase, right? So he can. Uh, he's probably the best best suited to get out of Mulligan to five on this team. Fair. Let's double check here. Yeah, he's got double Kodama's Reach and Sakura Tribe Elder. I mean, nobody wants the Mulligan 5, but I think that he's quite well prepared to to get out of it. Ken Crooner once told me, actually, that that uh, the skill that he he best learned in when when he went from being just a very middling PTQ player to the run he made a couple years back, a top 8 Worlds, top 8 some Grand Prix, was his ability to Mulligan. Okay. And, you know, we think of it like, I hate going to 5, but, yeah. but you... You actually have a better chance to win a lot of games, where, where you're mulligan to five and down two cards than you would with a seven card hand. That's just not going to do it. Right. Well. Decker just told us that he mulligan to five and just popped down. That's a curve tribal we were talking about. He could very well have a four four in play, and and reach in hand. So nice. It's the, the exact things that we were talking about. His ability to recover is is very much linked to the maturity of his ability to decide which hands to keep and which which uh, not to. Pacifico's hand looks like garbage. Moonlit <laughs> Strider and some planes. It's not very good. Did he attack and then there was no trade with the Zubera there? Correct. The Zubera trade would have been awesome. Nicholas doesn't know how bad Andrew's hand is, I guess. Yeah. Cage on the cohort is kind of amusing. What are you going to do? Eh, it's a 2-2. May as well lock it down for now. I mean, there's no super threat there. I mean, he can... The beauty of Cager Hands is if uh, if Nicholas like, busts out one of his best creatures, it can immediately switch targets. How many health? Right, and the 1-4 one, the one can protect against a 2-2 two -two with ease. Two. Nicholas, what's he got? Is that a Ren? Go. Yep. Yeah. Ren. Whisper. Rend and Whisper? I think so. Rend oh, Torrent. Torrent. How unfair. I don't think uh, Andrew's going to have a very good shot against that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, there any Every good card in Bornarell's deck 
is every good card in the world. It's not. We won draw. <laughs> Five land. Is he going to push here? He's going to bring. I think he doesn't care if he six. has to discard. Like it's just another land, right? Six was sixteen. Which one? Cards. Cool. What does he got? Pretty good battle on the back between Adam yeah. Chambers Plains, and uh, Camille Is that Camille Candle Fene? Slow? In the, the, is the other card Candle Slow in, in Pacific Coast Huh. Black Fred Comfort. Very good deck. <laughs> he jests. I mean, that hand is amazing. Is that Hanabi Blast, Torrent, Rend, and Rend? Yeah, so I didn't think of any of the yes. root commies. <laughs> Well, I figure that uh, the next seven creatures or so that Pacifico plays are not long for this world. I don't know, I need something to attack with, though. Pacifico doesn't know if he's really far behind at this point. Yeah, but he's not losing. I mean, what's he going to do? He's just going to chip in with the tanker. Well, at 16. Go down, only 15, 15 come left. Uh, uh, I, I bet Waxman Baku does not something. make it to its first effect phase. Yeah, we talked about we talked about this at the last Pro Tour, but we are changing up the coverage here. We're get, letting you play through the eyes of the players. You get a chance to see what these guys are holding. You get a chance to put yourself in their head and find out what these guys are thinking about when they make their plays. So Pacifico, he's like, oh, I finally drew a creature. Play it. Goodbye. And yes, Cornerell's big decision is how do I want to kill it? And Red Spirit appears to be the decision. Look at. Look at that open two mana there. Like that actually makes Pacifico think. There's like, is there something else? I mean, there could very well be something else, right? Yeah. And meanwhile, you see Pacifico is essentially bluffing a, a blessed buff. Three cards. Warner has got to know he doesn't have one in his deck, right? Oh. Adam Chambers just put ink eyes online on the back table, so hard to see with all the ink. <laughs> Hard to see the ability okay. to go. Ooh. No, Moonlit Strider. All right. Oh, Pacifico decides to save the Baku, uh, bring back advantage. his Zabera. Yeah, sort of one for zero. Yes, sir. What do you mean, sort of? I mean, it's just a Zubera. That Zubera fights everything on that table pretty well. Fair. John Smith still in action on the back table. He's got well, all his not Pacifico's got a devouring rage. The the Zubera is quite relevant. And wow. um Smith hid behind the trap root Kami and rebuilt his mana base, just like we were talking about. I don't Meanwhile Barnerell points another card at Waxman Baku. I don't this think yet this another Ren Spirit. Uh, Here comes a one two. That's Ashen Skin oh, Zubera? Right. Yes. That's an Ashen Skin Zubera that I believe John Becker was saying they should have had. Sure. What an ignominious fight of one power creatures. <laughs> Devoted retainer and Ashen Skin. Ah, irrelevant threat. If you're Pacific, do you run this out here or do you wait before you can protect it? What are you going to protect it with? He has a candle's glow. There, some of the removal in, in Bornerell's hand is damage based, yeah. So, Candle's Glow is quite savage there. It's like, in fact, we know that all the removal in Barnard of Sand is damage based. He's got Hanabi Blast and Torn Stone. I think he's just going to run it out there, and I think it's going to quickly die. Does he have another land in the same? Ah, no, Pacifico, much more conservative. Okay. Yep. Summons a 1 2. Interesting. A battle of 1 2s. He's got a Planes left in his hand, right? So. I think so. Yeah, so yeah. The next turn he can play land seven, Two. play the flip rider with candles go back up. Yeah. It's interesting. I think most players, and by most players I don't necessarily mean most professional players, would just run out the giant creature there because it's a very efficient use of their mana. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's clearly not as good. As you like Pacifico's play? Yeah, I, the, my whole point was do you think he waits? Yeah, maybe if it was a 3-3, three, three, it's worth running out, but 2-2, two, two, you know he's got an Ami's Blast in his deck. Well, Clifford is quite relevant in this situation, so... Yeah, it's important for Kyle here. Cornerstone. Ami's Blast is so scary to play against. Yep. Are you white? 
to. Are you blue? Careful not to have a conversation with John Becker. The, play, the people at home can't actually hear. Just forget. He's whispering into our ears. John Becker calls me at work every day, so I'm very used to talking to John Becker. Is that right? Yes. One of the cool things about the Pro Tour, even for those of us who aren't always playing on it, is uh, you know you make friends in Magic, and it's the same kind of links that you have with a lot of these teams who brought who brought some of the old timers and retirees out. We hang out, and we're friends outside of Magic still. Pacifico does not have the seven planes, ah. but he's still slow rolling the Rider. A deceiver. A big beat now. It's, it's kind of interesting to watch him slow roll that, that uh, Cliff Rider. I mean, he doesn't even have to really Ooh. fight an attrition war here. There's, there's nothing that Michael has got. Call something. Sweet. All right, we have our first game finish. Adam Chambers and his buddy Ink Eyes have taken game one. Chambers 1 0 over Fene. We called that a blowout, correct? Yes. How many call? Two. Yeah, Chambers drafted his deck really intelligently. He's got a lot of good cards that he knew would be good in the matchup. So. I mean, Chambers, no is, as there. we said in, in the, the previous segment, I mean, this kid's been in the top four of a Team Grand Prix in the last two months. Oh, he's, okay. he's got the skills in this format. Penobi Blast. Yep. So what's going on is is the the rat is stacking right now? Yes. So he doesn't rat want on a stack. The last is a response. Uh, doesn't want to let the Zubera have a chance to pick off his 3-1. Tricky. But, tricky. Yeah. Oh, nice play. Okay. Uh, Do you save here? Save the Zubera? Oh, sorry. It's probably not worth it. Okay. So Interesting. That's, uh, he's thinking about it, though. I mean, he'll get to kill he's at nothing. I mean, he'll, he'll eventually get to trade it for the 3-1. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Well, he really wants to use that candle's glow to protect the Cliff Rider, and right now he's kind of saying, "Hey, I don't have anything." Cliff Rider does kill the rat when it attacks. So that's your spot. All right, three cards. He's likely to take out one of the burn cards here. Anyway. Likely. Which one? Oh, uh, boy. Got blast. the blast. A two damage spell for three. No one should ever play those. <laughs> Not good. It's like a flare that doesn't draw a card and doesn't waste as much damage. Nope. Is he gonna peek? How about peeking? Tabs out opponent, peek. And peek. Okay. Sure. Oh. The yeah, match between Ben Combs and Don Smith on the back table is kind of bogged down with those Trap Root Commies in Don Smith's deck. You can see Mulligan to five, but Trap Root Commie was enough. Uh, Pacifico's not drawn a land, but has Another skillfully picked hands. up Cage of Hands number two. Seems okay. But Later. Izumi Ronin, so carefully okay. protected by Nicholas, yep. will soon find its way into the red zone. Not. I think Pacifico probably doesn't put Bornarell on any more removal at this point. He's really thrown a lot of it. Thrown a lot of removal out in the first. I, mean, I want to say first couple turns, but it's, it's already been more than five or six turns. I think that uh, this turn is going to see that giant red man. Oh, you think it's Cliff Rider time? He's coming. Yeah, yeah all day. Play there. Cage. How many draws did you make? <laughs> oh, I didn't make any. Oh, when you, you haven't, you only have only time. <laughs> no reason not to take advantage of it. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, he could cage here, but I think he's probably just going to play the Cliff Rider. Bernard's played so much removal already. No, cage is oh. the three one. Oh. He also knows it's a land on top, so... I think, uh, what do you think here? Do you think here comes the, the Harsh Deceiver? 
I think he sits back. I, he doesn't really want to get the harsh receiver in a fight with the Zubera at this point. Oh, apparently, he does not mind. I think he's telegraphing he doesn't have anything, which, interestingly enough, he has such a great hand. Yeah, so if Bonnerell blocks with Zubera here, yeah. Pacifico loses a very good card. Both the cards in his hands are quality, but Bonnerell doesn't know that. And Pacifico looks like he's willing. Oh, but he blocks anyway. Yeah, I think he just doesn't activate that. It's a bounce. Here comes, here comes damage. Nice. Well, well played. played. Yeah, well played. Sure. Sneaks all that for one point of damage. Yes. Look at how methodically the players are playing. Every point of damage really matters. So that hand that Bonnerell used to have, full removal, is down to just the Tornestone. And he really didn't do very much. No. I mean, he, he didn't have any offense. What he needed was some creature that was attacking, chipping away Pacifico's life total, while he removed everything. But if they just sit there and draw, it's like, you draw a fed, I play my answer. You draw a fed, Did he right, I play my answer. Oh, this is terrible for Bonnerell. Exact same turn as last turn, except for... Here comes a giant that's going to destroy his board position. What else is he supposed to do? Pacifico precisely leaves up one of each. Bornerell answers with the burn spell. Pacifico okay. counters. And unless Bornerell picks up something really good, it's going to be a bounce cage followed by an attack. It's going to devastate Bornerell's board. No torrent. Hmm. You would have torrented end step there if you were Bornerell? I see why not. Where you go? He's helping draw an arcane spell. Splice it. This seems kind of like a low percentage. He's got to pick up a creature, I think. I see. Is he down here? It's Torque. Blood Rites? He picked up Blood Rites. Oh, Blood Rites off the top. It's not bad. Um, let's see. How does that change the dynamic here? Um, I think Pacifico kind of... He's going to... It's kind of really bad for Pacifico because he's going to lose his cages. Yep. At least one. There's almost no way to stop it. Yeah, you pretty much have to lose one. Right? I mean, and he spends his mana picking up the cage. He just picked up that blood rights. That's rather lucky. Yeah, I'll stop blood rights. And actually, blood rights on that Zubera is <laughs> awesome. Did you just draw that. Did you just draw that. Specific on that. You just draw no, it? I was waiting for the spell. No, you know, I keep it. I can't keep it secret since many times. I took out the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> He just didn't do anything last turn. Oh, whatever. That's what I would have done. <laughs> Alright. What is this? Tax the Zubera. Oh no. That was the worst possible play. Yes. So he does save the clip rider with the panel as well. Because that was the last card out of his hand, too, right? Yeah. That was. Yeah, I completely agree with Don Becker. He should have sacked the 3-1 if he was going to make that play. Why is that? Because in, in this position, if he blows up the 3-1, the there's no way he can possibly survive against the running Cliff Rider. He's now tapped out. Pacifico's just going to pick up his cages and smash in. Take out the 3-1, and... So you think Bonnerell was like, if he's got a trick, I got nothing? Yeah, but it was just a waste. Like, the, the Ashley Skin Zubera's triggered ability did nothing, because he had Candle's Glow. And the, and the, and the Ashley Skin Zubera doesn't die to the Cliff Rider if it comes in. If he's gonna do a main phase Blood Rites activation, it has to be the Nizumi Cutthroat. I'm sorry, the Nizumi Ronin. Now he's tapped out. Pacifico, at the very least, is gonna pick up the Cage of Hands that's on the, that's on the 3-1. Right. Crack. Uh, demolish the 3-1 using the triggered ability. And then... I mean, what, he's staring down at best a 2 2 creature with a cage of hands on? He's probably just gonna pick up the other cage. I mean, Randy, let's see. He's gonna pick up He's gonna pick up one cage of hands, I think. There it goes. Okay. Yeah. Now he's gonna attack, and then he's gonna pick up the second cage of hands post attack. Then Borderell's gonna be able to use the removal card he's got left, and he's gonna have nothing. Careful attack. 
No, not careful Sweet. tank. Here comes everybody. Oh, and Pacifico just heard the word from the back table. Adam Chambers has already won his match. A quick 2 0. These are best two out of three, best two out of threes. So, Adam Chambers 2 0 sweep. Camille Finney's first pro tour. All the way to Sunday, oh, but uh, I'll pass right in, sure down a quick match. Exactly oh, the man. the play that we were talking about a second ago, Randy. Pacifico was just going to pick up the other cage, and uh, I think that Monorel is no going to need a lot to get out of this game now. Fair. How much better off is he if he sacks the three one? I don't know how. I mean, at the very least, uh, he he takes one of the two vitally important cage of hands out of Pacifico's. Why didn't Pacifico pick up the other cage? Yeah, that is surprising. He can't pick it up as a response because the yeah, I mean, sacrifice just... is a cost. So he just doesn't care about it? Sure. That's Weird. very... Um, that well, must be a miss that. Sacrifice back to build on side. Maybe he thought he could as a response? No, I think that that must have just been a mental one. Or maybe he doesn't care. But I, I can't imagine that he doesn't care entirely. Yeah, it's it's a, he has the spare mana, that's why I find yeah. it confusing. Right. Yeah. I, Is it what? I think oh, cage, no having the cage to force him to blood right something seems good enough. I think that the, the cages are very useful, regardless of the fact that his opponent has blood rights. Okay. He should just be cracking here. I mean, like the. Yeah. The fact that Borner also has Horn of Stone back is not really this turn. That's pretty much. I mean, it's another guy. Borner is down to six. It's also another target, though. Might be better to position that after attacks. The Tommy Waning one's not going to stick around, right? I mean, Borner knows that Pacifico's candle's goes gone. He doesn't have. Oh, oh interesting. He has devouring rage. rage. Devouring rage. Is that enough? Uh, at this point, I don't think so. Was it do three plus two? Um, I think Pacifico might get in a lot of trouble because he doesn't know the corner or else got that torn of stone. I, I could see that being a serious problem with the rage for the win. Rage torrent. for the win, and then torrent beats it. Interesting. Very good. Oh, another another dork. Dork. We're all drawing dorks is just fine. Saying that thing. Reveal. Reveal. Mm -hmm. oh, there's the land. Yeah. A mighty, mighty deceiver is he. What do you think, Kiradi? Does he bring with both? Uh, just assuming that the uh, that the one one is not going to live through the turn anyway. Randy, what do you think here? Does he bring with the one one as well? Hmm. Because in in uh in Pacifico's universe, he brings the one one as well, but kind of it looks like the bad play is for for Nicholas Lock to put sack. the no Nicholas will just put the two two in front of the one one. Right. Which would oh, be an eat, and then he can respond with the devouring rage for a considerable lethal? amount of damage. Is it lethal? He he pumped I don't think it's lethal. It's yeah, it's lethal. at six. Yeah. So I think that's the play he's gonna go for. It looks like the name. Yeah. Or he could he could be very conservative and do a pre-combat uh, pre-combat cage, but that's just gonna get one of his guys killed. <laughs> I think he's gonna go for both. Looks like he's going pre-combat cage. Does he, he, he have devouring rage banner? Is it four or five? Uh, well, I don't know why three are tapped. He, he's did, caging. Yeah, but he did. Oh, he revealed. Four. Reveal only costs two. Did he peek reveal? I thought he just revealed. Better reveal if Sean peeked. Alright, well, Cohort exactly doesn't need Black Economy. Does Pacifico go for the lethal Devouring Rage? Yeah, 4 mana's not good at all. Man, this doesn't seem like a great attack anymore. I thought he had enough mana. Did he not play a land? Is land in his hand? I... And then... 
Becker says that he revealed the land on top of his deck and then failed to play it. Which is actually in his favor because if he had gone for that chill sword of stone. Oh, okay, there you go. Oh, 2 5. Well, it would be Blood Rite plus 4. I don't know what just happened there. He got two points of damage in, that's what happened. Go. Up to Oh, he looked again, I guess? Yeah, with the main face peak. Yeah. Draws another land. Uh, another 2 5. The Sink Torn of Stone, damage on the stack, and blood rates. Can they. Enough mana, yeah, there's enough mana to gain up and take out the Deceiver. Um, Bornarel will be ahead on the board, and Pacifico will be ahead by 17 points of life. Second cage would look a lot better here. I mean, why he just made a mistake? Why did he not cage there? There. I mean, don't you just... Especially after pumping. Well, I guess he thinks... He doesn't know that there's a torrent. Oh, takes it, there goes it for the win. Wow, alright. So, Pacifico attacked with his 2-5 deceiver. Cornerell just took it, baiting Pacifico, and Pacifico took the bait, went for Devouring Rage. Not bad. But Bornerell had all the answers. Had the cohort. And... Hmm. Wow. Which creature is that? Huh? What creature is that? It's a... Good. Nizumi? Great bro. That's the great Oh, bro. boy. That cage play might bite Pacifico here. He's holding... Oh! A very good Pound hand. Master. Doesn't force a... He's gonna do pre-combat cage. I think? There's red mana open though. I mean, it's... Sure. It's just gonna be a wash, right? Here he comes. Bornerell <laughs> cannot possibly think that it's safe to go to 2 life. Why not? The Pacifico has Hanabi Blast in his deck. It's Hanabi Blast, and then... I guess just an Abbey Blast. Okay. Take it. Oh, oh boy. Five oh, mana. Does he have enough mana open to... Oh, he's just gonna start Let's eating sell. Graveyard. Okay. It'd take a while. Ten cards. This one. Or this one. The problem is Bornerell's got juice in his own Graveyard. Yeah. Plus the horse thing. Uh, this is really interesting. I, I, I still like Pacifico yeah, in this game, so. but... So Bornerell does take the two. I think that's right. I think he's got to try to ride the Grave Robber to victory. Hope to draw a creature. Sack it if he has to. I didn't say it was it was wrong to not go down to two. I just thought it, it can't be safe. Another update on the backmatch table. Ben Combs has taken game one from Don Smith. He did it by leveling up at a Roki Egg Watcher. I would just like to point out yes. that this morning we were sorting through the tokens and the judging staff said, oh, All we just need spirit tokens. I'm like, well, what about snake tokens? <laughs> and they're like, well, from what? Suzuki summons? I'm like, well, what about Egg Watcher? And the French judge is like, not good enough. <laughs> and I was like, I'm pretty sure that it's going to get played. It got played yesterday. It's like, not good enough. Interesting. It's a long time to put that guy, but somehow Combs found time. So Combs up a game. So what happened? We add is up a match with Chambers. Bornarell spent all his mana main face and at Oh, the there's the Nobby Blast. blast. Pacifico draws the Nobby Blast off the top. There it is. Andrew uh, Pacifico of We Add takes the game on. Shouting. It's a little early. The crowd will get into it. How's the old boy? So, game one from Andrew Pacifico. Pacifico switched between what is called tight and loose play that game. Very tight early. Loosened up a little bit in the mid to late game. Alright, we're gonna... That was game two. We're gonna take a oh, you're take in. a break from this match and go check in on the other match, yeah. on the back table. You're in Paris so. or you're in Seven? 